Hey everyone, in this video we're going to be finding the real and imaginary parts of this complex number, i to the n, for any n that's an integer. This is problem 1.2 part d, which can be found in your free online open source complex analysis textbook. I highly recommend you take a look, I'll leave a link in the description below. So how do we find the real and imaginary parts to this complex number? Well first let's identify what i to the n is. The definition of i to the n is i times i times i times i and so on times i where there are n i's here. Now this doesn't really help me figure out what the real and imaginary part is because I would have to multiply all of these i's together to figure that out. And I don't really know how to do that considering I don't know how many i's I have here. I, I have n i's, but how many i's is that? It's n. What is n? Some integer, I guess. So here's what we're going to do to try to address this. We're going to pick values of n, specific integers for n, and we're just going to look at what i raised to that power is. So let's start with a table. So here in the left column, I'm gonna pick some integers for n, and on the right column, we're gonna try to figure out what i raised to that power is in terms of its real and imaginary parts. So let's start with some easy n values. Zero, what is i to the zeroth power? Well, anything raised to the zeroth power, any complex number raised to the zeroth power is one. What about when n equals one? Well, i to the one-th power is i. So here we have a real part that is one and an imaginary part that is zero. When n equals one, we have a real part of zero and an imaginary part of one, sort of swapped there. When n equals two, we have i squared, which is negative one. Here, the real part is negative one, and the imaginary part is zero. And then if we go to three, i cubed is just i squared times i. And if I write it like this, it makes it easy to figure out what i squared times i is because I already know what i squared is. i squared is negative one. And so i squared times i is negative one, times i, which is just negative i. And so in this specific instance, the real part is zero and the imaginary part is negative one. So you might notice we're rotating between real and imaginary, zero, one, zero, one. And on top of that, the signs are flipping. It went from positive to negative. Let's see what happens at n equals four. I'm gonna give myself some more room here. Well, i to the fourth is just i cubed times i. And I can always do this because then I can just take the result from above and replace that with i cubed here. And I can just keep doing that with whatever number I have, minus one, I can just replace with the above result and rinse and repeat. So this is negative i times i which from here we can see is negative i squared, and negative i squared is negative negative one, which is just one. i squared is negative one, so negative i squared is positive one. So in this instance, the real part is one, and the imaginary part is zero, which is the same as this instance here, where the real part is one and the imaginary part is zero. Let's go to n equals five. Here, i to the fifth power is just i to the fourth power times i. And we do this so that we can take the result from our previous output and we can say this is one times i, substitution, which is just i. And in this instance, we have the real part is zero and the imaginary part is one. Just like above, we had a real part here was zero and the imaginary part was one. 
And so you notice, you might notice that we're going into a cycle. We're just going back and forth here. We're alternating. So it's zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one, zero, negative one, zero, one. So let's try to represent this relationship with some formula. Now in complex analysis, technically, I haven't introduced the divides operation, although I have done videos on the divides operation and I highly recommend you take a look at those. I'm gonna to try to make this function definition a little bit more approachable. So this might look a little sloppy, but bear in mind I'm doing this so that everyone can understand what i to the n is. i to the n is one of four things. i to the n is one if n is a multiple of four. Now I should clarify, when I say multiple, I mean it could be four or eight or 12 or 16 or even zero or negative four or negative eight specifically all of the integer multiples of four. And then for n equals one, we get i as a result. But that is when n equals one or n equals five or n equals nine or n equals 13. So how do we represent those numbers? Well, if we just take that number and we subtract one, then we're back to a multiple of four. So is a multiple of four. And then up next we have negative one because i squared is negative one. If n minus two is a multiple of four. Again, technically this portion is a concept that I develop in my number theory lectures, my number theory videos. And so I don't expect you to understand how we develop this portion. So if I were to make a test for my complex analysis students, I would not ask this question explicitly because this requires a little bit of number theory to understand. And then lastly, we have negative i if n minus three is a multiple of four. And I'll just put quotation marks just to represent, it's the same as above. So we're not done yet. I wanna identify what the real and the imaginary part of i to the n is. Well, that is dependent on what the output of i to the n is, and that is dependent on which of these is divisible by four. So let's go through each case. If i to the n is one, then the real part is one and the imaginary part is zero. If i to the n is i, then the real part is zero and the imaginary part is one. If i to the n is negative one, then the real part is negative one and the imaginary part is zero. And if i to the n is negative i, then the real part is zero and the imaginary part is negative one. And that's how I would answer this question. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.